Hi everyone, my name is Tim Zarillo and I'm shooting this video from our conference room at Zarillo Law Firm in Portland, Maine. And I'm shooting this video about a topic that I get um, questions about quite a bit, uh, especially if a client of mine has been indicted or maybe they're a new client and they're wondering, they've called me because they've gotten this thing in the mail uh, called an indictment, maybe from a state court or from the federal court. And they say, what is this indictment? And who is this grand jury that, that uh, handed this indictment down against me? Well, an indictment can be a confusing thing. In the state of Maine and in the federal courts across the United States, an indictment is basically just a formal charge that is brought by the grand jury. And you might think that because uh, grand jury has the word jury in it, that it means a group of people who make decisions related to a case after hearing all the facts, but that's not true. The grand jury is a group of citizens who make decisions to charge someone with a felony. However, they only hear from one side and that side is the government. What that means is the government brings in their witnesses, usually law enforcement, to testify to their side only. Uh, they never hear, the grand jury never hears from defense lawyers, for example. They are not let into the grand jury. There is no judge in the grand jury. So it's not a jury in the sense of anything other than it's a group uh, of people made up of citizens uh, whose function it is to return indictments. Their function is not to make a choice after hearing from both sides or have a judge decide what evidence is admissible or is not admissible. So since the grand jury's function is to return indictments, um, and since that indictment is just a formal charge involving at least one felony count, if you received an indictment, then you know you have been charged with at least one felony count. And that's the way it works in federal courts in the state of Maine and in state courts in the state of Maine. As a practical matter, um, the grand jury itself is not a lot of protection. Although I have had a couple of cases where the grand jury has refused to return, uh, return indictments, including a, a, a major drug trafficking case and, a, um, and an alleged manslaughter case. So those were terrific, uh, terrific wins for my client. But keep in mind that in over 20 years of practicing criminal defense work in the state, I've only had those two. Um, as a practical matter, as I say, the idea is that the grand jury is to protect you from a prosecutor or a police officer merely being the ones to make the decision on formally charging a felony. By the way, you might have been charged with a felony before the indictment. In other words, they might have arrested you, um, et cetera, but you still would need to be charged by indictment within a period of time or waive indictment uh, or else that charge will ultimately be dismissed. Now, you might also face a situation where you are a witness to the grand jury. Now, this is a, a, a complicated area and I represent people all the time who are witnesses in state and in federal grand juries. Uh, and it can present a complicated analysis of the Fifth Amendment that is frankly too broad for this video. But if you are subpoenaed to the grand jury, just keep in mind that you have a right to have a lawyer. And you may have Fifth Amendment rights depending upon whether or not you are a target or if you are, are uh, potentially a target of an investigation. Uh, and even though I told you lawyers are not, defense lawyers are not permitted inside the grand jury room, they are permitted outside the grand jury room. So functionally what happens is if I represent a client before the grand jury, we discuss obviously the, um, the strictures and parameters of their testimony in advance. Um, and then if, if they have questions during the grand jury process, literally question by question, they can come out and I have a little room outside the grand jury room where they can ask me how they should answer the question, if they should plead the fifth and so on. Uh, so having a lawyer with you for grand jury testimony, even if you're not sure if you were a target is very often a good idea. And it is certainly a smart move if you are a business where the fifth amendment does not apply in the same way or sometimes not even at all. If you've been indicted by the grand jury, that essentially means you have been charged with at least one felony. Uh, you have now been formally charged with that felony. 
and that charge supersedes any other charges that were previously brought against you in the same case. In other words, if you were a arrested for a misdemeanor theft in the state of Maine, and they have now charged you with a felony theft, then that is what you're charged with uh, if you're charged by indictment with that felony theft. Um, after your indictment, what happens next is your arraignment. And I'll discuss what happens in your arraignment in the next video because this video is already too long. Thanks for watching. Check out our website, zerillolaw.com to learn more about our practice. That's Z-E-R-I-L-L-O-L-A-W.com. Thanks again.